we have not in this culture awakened to the depth of the crisis that surrounds us. We have not in this culture awakened to the depth of the crisis that surrounds us. We have not in this culture awakened to the depth of the crisis that surrounds us. The planet is being destroyed all around us. Using money to try to address that problem, it's shooting yourself in the foot. Evolve or perish, grow up or die, an entirely new level of human consciousness is needed right now, or we're all dead. Mankind openly descends into world of bloodshed without end. Dog eat dog until everything is killed and the last man commits suicide or is poisoned, having all the toys and they mean nothing. When you believe you're already dead and you got nothing to live for, you fight better than you've ever fought in your life. When your back's to the wall, that's the only time when humans actually choose to evolve at the moment of death, at the moment when we face our destruction. That's when the greatest leaps in human consciousness and the leaps of human heart take place. I'm tired. I'm ready to die. Great, bring it on. I'm not afraid of death at all. That'll be a big relief for me. That'll be graduation. God, I get out of this godforsaken shithole that I love more than anything else in the world. <sighs> the scout's knife is sharp on both edges. It cuts in both directions. Okay, here's the deal. One of the most critical things to understand, with without a shadow of a doubt, proves the unsustainable nature of our current social system and how it is on a collision course with nature, is this. Due to the way money and hence the market system functions, we are locked into an incompatible paradigm where two mutually exclusive operating principles, one, the need for constant consumption or infinite growth collides with an unyielding finite planet and hence the physical laws of nature. You simply cannot have an infinite growth of commerce and hence consumption in a closed system such as the planet Earth. For all those that don't fully understand this, let me explain more. <clears throat> The planet Earth is basically a closed system when it comes to its resources. All the minerals and energy deposits that we currently use have rates of cultivation that dramatically exceed the lifespan of the human being. For example, oil and fossil fuels in general took over 100 million years easy for them to come about. The same goes for our mineral resources. The 4,400 mineral species out there today took outrageous amounts of time to be created. The diamonds that we find today took over three billion years to be created. Now, given this environmental reality, it would seem painfully obvious that the most important aspect of any earthly society would be the preservation of the Earth's resources, right? It would seem, in fact, that the entire basis of any economic structure would have as the number one priority the preservation of the resources of the planet. Why? Because once it's gone, it's gone. For example, even at this stage of scientific inquiry, we cannot take a tire, which contains probably six or seven gallons of oil, and convert it back into combustible fuel. So instead of having a logical system of resource management, where we actually monitor the Earth's resources and try, as the human species, to strategically orient our use of these precious finite elements, we came up with something much more interesting. And it's called the infinite growth economic paradigm. In our current system, 
we grab as many resources as we can, we throw them into anything that we think someone will buy, and we try to manipulate each other into buying these things from us for profit. In fact, the entire basis of the free market ideology is using and exchanging as many resources as possible, as fast as possible, to generate as much money as possible, which in turn is used to exploit more resources over and over again. We've created a global money and profit driven structure which consists of a circular exchange protocol, if you will, where money must move from the consumer to the employer to the employee, which is the consumer again, and the only way again to sustain this pattern to keep people employed, the only way to keep people eating, the only way to keep GDP up, the only way to keep the stock market up is through the mandate that goods and services comprised again of our finite resources and energy are constantly and perpetually used and sold ad infinitum irregardless of purpose, utility, or respect for what we actually have. I couldn't possibly come up with a more destructive manner for organizing society. And the sad thing is, people don't see this whatsoever. They have been conditioned into ideologies. Capitalism, communism, socialism, well, guess what? Any social ideology, specifically economic, which does not directly relate to the resources of the planet in its doctrines explicitly, meaning the attributes of our environment which actually sustain our lives, is an inapplicable and thus irrelevant social ideology. Case in point, oil and fossil fuels. We live in a hydrocarbon economy, as I'm sure you all know. Our entire economic structure, meaning production, distribution, food cultivation, transportation, etc., is entirely based on energy from fossil fuels. There are 10 calories of hydrocarbon energy in every one calorie of food currently consumed in the industrialized world. This is M. King Hubbard, a geologist and, interestingly enough, a technocrat. M. King Hubbard predicted in the late 1940s that the United States would peak in its oil production in 1970. Of course, he was ridiculed, laughed at, and scorned by the scientific establishment. And unfortunately, he was right. The U.S. did peak in the 1970s. In fact, some studies now show that global oil discoveries have likely peaked around the same time. The exact date is debatable, but it doesn't change anything. Now, before I go any further, I know some of you out there are saying, how do we know that these statistics are accurate? How do we know that the research institutions are unaware of existing oil supplies that go undiscovered? And how do we know if the oil corporations themselves, which contain the data, are not lying to simply boost their profits? Well, these are good questions, but there is no question about the decline in the United States. We do import over 70% of our oil now. And as far as the global peak, all you really have to do is look at the drilling patterns of the major corporations to see that almost every major oil company is desperate to find new oil reserves and they have gone almost everywhere legally possible to do so. The oil on this planet, which took 100 million years to generate, regardless of what you believe about depletion rates, is going to run out one way or another. It is an unsustainable practice. And I won't even go into the obvious dangers associated with burning fossil fuels in regards to its environmental effects, which we're all hearing about today. As an aside, it is not at all irrational or hasty to consider that the peak oil issue just might have something to do with the fact that the United States, which consumes 25% of the world's energy while having only 5% of the population, has the largest permanent military bases in history situated in the Middle East with no evidence whatsoever of ever leaving this region. Obama has already stated that he is going to leave 50,000 troops in the Middle East indefinitely. <laughs> this is the guy that got the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> As we continue in the Middle East to probe and agitate countries which contain, guess what, the majority of the remaining recoverable oil on this planet, such as Iran. Give it some thought. Now, if you take for a moment to consider that peak oil and its relationship to the economic system and geopolitics might be relevant to uh, the U.S. involvement in the Middle East, uh, you'll tend to find the world starts to make a lot more sense. In the words of M. King Hubbard, we are in a crisis in the evolution of human society 
It's unique to both human and geological history. It has never happened before, and it can't possibly happen again. You can only use oil once. Soon, all the oil is going to be burned, and all the metals mined and scattered. This is obviously a scenario of catastrophe, but we have the technology. All we have to do is completely overhaul our culture and find an alternative to money. We are not starting from zero. We have an enormous amount of existing technical knowledge. Just a matter of putting it all together. A non-catastrophic solution is impossible unless the society is made stable. This means abandoning two axioms of our culture: the current work ethic and the idea that growth is a normal state of life. He continues in a paper he wrote in 1981 called "Two Intellectual Systems: Matter, Energy, and the Monetary Culture." Hubbard writes, "The world's present industrial civilization is handicapped by the coexistence." Of two universal, overlapping, and incompatible intellectual systems, the accumulated knowledge of the last four centuries of the properties and interrelationships of matter and energy, and the associated monetary culture, which has evolved from folkways of prehistoric origin. You simply cannot have a society operate based on this necessity for constant growth to maintain, ironically, stability. That the ultimate crime and everything that's wrong with this world comes from whoever wrote into Genesis that mankind should have dominion over this planet and go forth and multiply and subdue the fowls. That's the crime of separating human consciousness from the consciousness of all the other things that we need. Whether it's the water that we drink, the air that we breathe, the animals that we eat. We live in a monetary paradigm that demands infinite growth, so balance is not possible. There are 7.1 billion people on the world today. There were only one billion people on the world when man discovered oil, and all 6.1 billion exponential growth like that. And I, I've done this. Everybody knows this gesture on my part. Human population went like this. And all populations, once they hit that unfettered growth, they all have a collapse. They all dive and die off. The human economic paradigm that has been in place basically for all of recorded history since money was first invented, or certainly since money was was first lent. At interest, is that we live in an infinite growth paradigm. The economic、uh, paradigm we live in now is is a Ponzi scheme. It's nothing grows forever. It's not possible. As a great、uh, psychologist, James Hillman wrote, the only thing that grows in a human body after a certain age is cancer. And I think that that's clearly what we're seeing now at,、uh, at the end of human industrial civilization, with a population approaching seven billion. Money is only、uh, a symbol. It only represents the ability to do work, and energy is the ability to do work. And by printing money, you don't create more energy.、No. Everything in an, in an infinite growth paradigm has to keep growing. It's not just the amount of money that has to keep growing; it's the amount of consumers that have to keep growing as well. Now, the only thing that's made that possible、uh, in, in human civilization is oil. If you look at the presence of oil, or when it was first introduced in the early 1900s, late 1890s, human population shot from roughly two, two and a half billion to almost seven billion people. That's all as a result of oil.、Uh, so, it, and, and the monetary paradigm requires that you keep generating more、uh, consumers to borrow money at interest to generate more money, and obviously that's not possible on a finite planet. I was interviewed by the Wall Street Journal、uh, shortly after the movie Collapse came out, and they asked me、uh, what the point of the, 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 the point of the movie was. And I said it very simply. I said it is not possible to continue infinite consumption and infinite population growth on a finite planet. That simple. Well. The American dream is based on rampant consumerism. It, it, it is based upon the fact that mainstream media and especially commercial advertising,、uh, all corporations who need this infinite growth, have convinced us or brainwashed、uh, most people in America 
and hence the world, that uh, we have to have X number of material possessions and the possibility of gaining in infinitely more material possessions in order to be happy. That's just not true. And that's also uh, a, a big lie. Uh, you know, the, the American dream says you can have anything you want if you work hard enough for it. Well, what, what that doesn't say, according to the old American dream, was if you burn enough oil to get it. Well, any pyramid scheme, by definition, has to collapse. That's what happens to all bubbles. It's the history of every bubble, every pyramid scheme in human history. This is just now the biggest one. It's the economic paradigm that governs the whole planet. It's the life bubble. It's the population pyramid scheme that, that must collapse also. It's inevitable. It's like a law of physics. Uh, there's been no situation ever recorded, whether it's a, a bacteria in a petri dish with unlimited food and no competition, or caribou on, a, on, an, on an arctic island. Population shoots right up and explodes, and then all of a sudden it crashes, and there's a massive die-off. That's, that, that's a law as fundamental as the law of gravity. Most, most of the religions on this planet trace their origins back three, two, three, four thousand years. It, it, go back to Abraham for uh, the Jewish, Christ, Christian, and Muslim faith, uh, you know, Buddha, uh, Buddhism, all the other major religions. They've been around for a while, but those religions were formulated by men at, at a time when the only way the religion could survive was by having more babies and more members. So uh, all of the current religions governing this planet, with the, with the exceptions of Buddhism, Hindu, Hinduism, and uh, Taoism, let's say, uh, and Native American spirituality are based upon, the European re religions, the, the Middle East, are, are based upon infinite growth of population. So religious laws and ordinances were written in to make sure that there were as many babies as possible because that was the way it was done a thousand, two thousand years ago when, when the earth was basically untapped. It was assumed there were infinite resources. That's why I say God is on the table now. Religions are not working that uh, push that uh, paradigm. Yeah, there's always going to be an issue with someone being able to acquire a hundred billion dollars, like the Amazon Jeff Bezos guy. Like, that, that is going to corrupt people. Mm. It's gonna, it's like, why would you, first of all, why would you keep working? Why would you want that amount of money? Mm. And what's your plan? What's your end game? Are you trying to make the world a better place? You're gonna try to acquire more brown boxes with your logo on them. I mean, what are you, what are you doing? Like, yeah. where's, where's it going? And it, it seems to me that there's a game, right? Everybody plays this game. Some people play it for $10 an hour. Some people play it for $10 billion a year. And that once you make $10 billion a year, you want infinite growth. You want 11 next year. I would like to uh, tell my stockholders that uh, we have cause to celebrate. And uh, we're, we have a 20% increase in uh, our uh, bottom line this year. And everybody's looking good. Let's go to Tahiti. <laughs> right? And then, like, where? what are you doing? You, you can't. This is not going to last. You're not going to live forever. Like, what? what is the end game? Well, there's no end game. You're caught up in the current game. Mm -hmm. In the current game. They, they are literally, capitalists are literally living in the moment. Because yeah, you're right. They're just stockpiling shit. Yeah, you know, they're, not, they're not thinking about the overall objective. You know, uh, sky down, looking from the you know, looking from the heavens down on Earth. Like, what the fuck are we doing? They're not thinking about that. Nor are they accepting that limitless growth is literally impossible. Yeah. That we have finite resources on a finite planet. And Maybe if you for you, not for me. I got a yacht. <laughs> I got a fucking island. And I think it's also. The earth is full. It's full of us, full of our stuff, full of our waste, full of our demands. Our economy is now bigger than its host, our planet. What this means is our economy is unsustainable. When things aren't sustainable, they stop. Economic growth, it will stop because of the end of cheap resources 
it will stop because of the uh, growing demand of us on all the systems of the earth. It is based on a crazy idea. The crazy idea being that we can have infinite growth on a finite planet. The earth doesn't care what we need. Mother nature doesn't negotiate. She just sets rules and describes consequences. We tend to look at the world not as the integrated system that it is, but as a series of individual issues. We see the Occupy protest. We see spiralling debt crises. We see growing inequality. We see money's influence on politics. But we see, mistakenly, each of these issues as individual problems to be solved. In fact, it's the system in the painful process of breaking down. I could give you countless studies and evidence to prove this, but I won't because if you want to see it, that evidence is all around you. The crisis is now inevitable. The issue is, how will we react? Imagine our economy when the carbon bubble bursts. When the financial markets recognise that they have any hope of preventing the climate spiralling out of control, the oil and coal industries are finished. Imagine the Middle East without oil income, but with collapsing governments. Imagine China, India and Pakistan going to war as climate impacts generate conflict over food and water. Imagine our highly tuned just-in-time food industry and our highly stressed agricultural system failing and supermarket shelves emptying. Imagine 30% unemployment in America as the global economy is gripped by fear and uncertainty. Imagine what it means for your personal security as a heavily armed civilian population gets angrier and angrier about why this was allowed to happen. So how do you feel when the lights go out on the global economy in your mind? When your assumptions about the future fade away and something very different emerges? Just take a moment and take a breath and think, what do you feel? When we think about the kind of possibilities I paint, we should feel a bit of fear. We are in danger, all of us, and we've evolved to respond to danger with fear, to motivate a powerful response. We have achieved remarkable things since working out how to grow food some 10,000 years ago. Those people that have faith that humans can solve any problem, that technology is limitless, that markets can be a force for good, are in fact right. The only thing they're missing is that it takes a good crisis to get us going. When we feel fear and we fear loss, we are capable of quite extraordinary things. After the bombing of Pearl Harbour, it just took four days for the government to ban the production of civilian cars and to redirect the auto industry. And from there, to rationing of food and energy. Think about how a company responds to a bankruptcy threat and how change that seemed impossible just gets done. Think about how an individual responds to a, a diagnosis of, of a life-threatening illness and how lifestyle changes that previously were just too difficult suddenly become relatively easy. We can transform our economy. The only thing we need to change is how we think and how we feel. I know the free market fundamentalists will tell you that more growth, more stuff, and nine billion people going shopping is the best we can do. They're wrong. Right? We can be more, we can be much more.
We can choose this moment of crisis to ask and answer the big questions of society's evolution. Like, what do we want to be when we grow up? When we move past this bumbling adolescence where we think there are no limits and suffer delusions of immortality. Well, it's time to grow up. To be wiser, to be calmer, to be more considered. Like generations before us, we'll be growing up in war. Not a war between civilizations, but a war for civilization. This could be our finest hour.
Everybody thinks we're wrong The mother Who are they to judge us? Mother, mother Simply call me sweet Where I had long Mother, mother Ooh We have not in this culture awakened to the depth of the crisis that surrounds us.